All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is February 11th, 2023. I hope you're sitting down. I am sitting down because I'm doing the video and that's just the way it is. But I hope you're sitting down. I hope if you're driving, you're able to, to pull over to the side of the road and take a little time because it's going to be exciting tonight. You'll notice this is like a day earlier than I would normally do a video. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> I couldn't wait anymore. I simply couldn't wait anymore. You know, as as I spoke in the last video, which is uh, the live show, the last video we did right here, the live show, um, I, I was saying that, you know, hey, with Tuba Shavat, right, the new year of trees having passed, that's it. You know, let's set it aside and start looking at where Taurus is. Taurus is, is is a key revelation that we've been given here in this ministry. And the reason it is, is because it was from the Holy Spirit with right on target. You guys know it. It's the only one we've ever received outside of the incredible leading of the Holy Spirit through the revelation of the word of Jesus Christ, the revelation of him for the is to come that is revealed so much from the understanding of creation or the creations, as we should say, <clears throat> to who the gospels are speaking to, to the revelation that the end of days is, is got a big picture of 21 years and the 22nd year is the Jubilee millennial reign, to, to realizing that the first seven are quote unquote easy and then it's 14 years, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. And that when that first easy seven comes to an end, we know that there are 50 days that come before the 14 years begins. Well, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you know, uh, from the live show, I was, I was bringing it about and saying, well, hey, now with Tuba Shavad having passed, we need to kind of move forward from it. And and maybe everything that we were looking at that was connected it from to, to it, like John chapter four and and 70 begins 50 days and then the 14 years, right? That pendant of Christ going from right to left, showing that it was 70 starts at 70 ends it. Oh, it was incredible. And to think, oh my goodness, was all that just for naught? was that incredible revelation that connected these things to the pendant from the Shroud of Turn that we have proven was a revelation in understanding connected to this ministry. Is it possible that that just gets thrown out the window? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. And it started with, I'm not going to go into everything yet. I'm going to still do my intro, but it started with this comet. I had set everything aside. Now, let's not forget this comet, right? This comet ZT, ZTF, this comet we showed in a recent video from, from a guy who understands the movement through the sun, moon, and stars and, and the, 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 the constellations and how this comet was moving through it, that it indeed was significant and Christ was revealing his story in it. But. Tuba Shavat comes and goes. So I set it aside. But we have an incredible forum. We have here from the Ministry Revealed website, you can join us in the forum when you hear me talk about it. It's like-minded brothers and sisters from all over the world, over 1,100 of them from all over the world, and we're sharing, right, news and events and prayer requests and Bible studies and all sorts of things from like-minded brothers and sisters watching, praying, seeking, diligently searching the Lord. Not just about when it's going to begin, but the entirety of his story from beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. And the, the, the understanding of the times we are in is a part of Revelation. Well, some were still persistent. And they were sharing more about the comet. And lo and behold, somebody had posted a video, I believe it was from Steve Fletcher, showing where the comet was going to be at a certain time. Now, Steve does not know what we know unless he watches and doesn't say anything. But he doesn't know what we know in relation to the importance of 
Taurus. In relation to the importance of Taurus, you guys know the story of the Shroud of Turin that we have shared here a number of times. This pendant, because of laser technology, they were able to read what this pendant had on it. And this pendant was from right to left, the way the Jews read, Ayin Aleph Nun. That means the 16th letter of the Hebrew alphabet equals the 70th in numbers. Aleph is one. That means the beginning. This noon is the letter 14th letter of the hebrew alphabet <coughs> which means 50 in the number so you've got 70 1 and 50. 70 begins 50 and 50 is the 14th letter which represents a, a typology within the 14 years when the 50 days are over the 14 years begin we showed that at 70 begins 50. But Tuba Shavat has come and gone. This is a representation of the head of Taurus called the beginning. This was the revelation we were given. However, it wasn't the whole head of Taurus that we were given directly for us to understand. It was noon. Noon. This noon, which represents 50, which means bullseye, which means right on target, is 14 and 50. This is what we were given to understand and to reveal that was connected to this ministry and revealed to us Taurus, which was the whole of this image, the whole of this pendant that Christ was wearing. We talked about how it goes this way at the beginning. 70 years, which we believed from, was from the New Year of Trees, begins as Aleph, beginning Taurus. But Taurus isn't until Savan, the Hebrew calendar month of Savan. But we had John chapter 4, where Christ told us four months early, white and ready. <laughs> and we know it means watch, and it related to the well. And the well means, in, in the story with Rebecca, it means Ayin. You can see I'm a little excited, right? It, it was over the top. So we had at 70, the true four, and then 70 to the new year of trees. And then begins 50 days and then the 14 years. And then in reverse, you would have the 14 years ending. 50 representing the Jubilee begins or ends 70, which was for Jerusalem. If this wasn't the case, Lord, after that incredible connection or connections, what did we miss? <laughs> what did we miss? Well, <clears throat> you're going to see something that when we were talking about this comet and that guy, we showed that video and that guy talking about it, and he knew that this is what it meant. Well, it only went so far. After it went beyond where he was talking about, I essentially thought nothing until Steve added in his video, which was shared in the forum. And the reason it was shared in the forum was because of something very specific about where that comet was. See what I'm getting at? Comet, Taurus, Comet, Taurus. Well, that's where it started. And I started to see it and I started to say, oh my goodness, we are looking for Taurus, but it's four months early. So are we going to get a sign of Taurus, even though it's four months early? <laughs> well, of course we are. Of course we are. You see, as, as, the, as, as the ministry that was revealed, the revelation that is being led through the Spirit in, in, in discerning all of these things, bringing about the understanding of the Gospels in 14 years and creation and all of these things. It would make sense that we would understand a sign for us in Taurus. But it doesn't mean it's only for us, because there are other watchmen and women that are out there that are also still following this comment, like Steve, for example. They're following it because 
there's something going on there's significance to it in how it's traveling and where it's traveling so to a ministry like us and everything we've been revealed about taurus and the connections it has a greater impact which is why it caught my attention and i was getting excited i started to get excited and then last night i was in the garage you know i spent a lot of my time in my garage and i have my little my little uh tabernacle you could say right my little shed in here and you know and and i'm just in the garage and I, i'm contemplating these things and praying and seeking the lord and i'm just in conversation you know just in a prayer talk to the lord and something reminded me the spirit you could say the spirit right it wasn't a voice it wasn't a thus say the lord it wasn't a vision it was nothing like that it was the way it always happens to me it just comes into my thoughts and when it came to my thoughts i went to my laptop and i said oh my goodness oh my goodness can it be and as I started digging into it, I'm sharing all of this with my wife last night, starting to get even more excited. And then something else happens this afternoon. I start telling my wife about it and I start getting even more excited. And then I get a couple brothers. One sent me an email and another one sent me a message in the forum. And I said, your, your guys are on it, man. I'm already on it. But yes, exactly. We're going to talk about what that is as well and why the timing and what else is connected with it is so important this weekend and we started i started building it and putting it together even more you're going to see that that it even leads us to what we've been sharing in the book because what do we know we know it begins with the apostolic age the apostolic age begins it and it begins it with the apostles the apostles these new modern day apostles that we've been teaching on they begin the 40 days the lord the typology of john 20 will breathe on the chosen apostles whether it's a dozen again represented by the 10 and then another one later or whether it's many more i don't know but whoever they will be will be breathed on first where the lord will visit them at the escape of the bride of christ when the 50 days begins we've then taught that what during those 50 days during those first seven to eight days that represent that apostolic age breaking out we showed that the wedding is going to take place in the third heaven the pre-trib escape will happen the wedding will take place and when he returns he's going to meet with those apostles at that eighth day for a short period and then on the same eighth day he's going to go meet with the luke 24 disciples and those disciples that's the smyrna group does it mean that the apostles are gone no it just they're going to continue through seals but it is represented during that first week is their time is their specific time of the beginning of the apostolic age something that many have been waiting for for decades well when he comes after and on that eighth day and he goes and meets with the luke group disciples the smyrna group the 14thers that probably relate to 14ers brothers and sisters who is more prepared than a group of 14ers in a ministry who have had the revelation of the end and understand that while the wedding is taking place on earth we're here waiting for him to come and knock on the door at the eighth day to be girded about and ready and when he comes we just recently taught that we can show and we have proven scripturally that he is going to sit and eat and serve that group they're going to be honored with this meal because they should have been a part of the wedding group but their work is here what better group than a group that's been prepared in the understanding brothers and sisters I was maybe a little bit discouraged thinking, oh, we're probably gonna have to wait till the time of Taurus and count it out either at the beginning of June at true time of Taurus on the 15th day of Savan, or it'll begin the count from Savan and we would go all the way to Tishri. But I believe we've got the date literally given to us in scripture. What? Yep. 
I believe if this has been understood, we're going to find out. And <laughs> you're going to find out very, very soon. We don't need to wait that long from what I'm showing. From what I'm seeing, from what I'm understanding, this is the week. This is the week, and I believe I'm going to be able to prove it to you. Because you're not going to want to discard these other things that we've taught on. Don't discard these things that we've taught on. What was all of this about? It's in here we showed this disciple group, right? And then we in the in the last in the last one here outside of the live show, we showed the connection to to the disciple group who will have a meal with the Lord. But this was all about the countdown to Tuba Shavat. And what was it? We had John chapter four. <clears throat> we had Zechariah chapter one. We knew that it was connected to the almond tree, that it was the 70 years of the Lord to, to the new year of trees. Don't disregard any of these things because every single one of them is still in play as I'm speaking to you right now. For anybody that's new and you've heard me say some crazy things like 14 years of tribulation or who the gospels are speaking to, you're going to want to come to this playlist right here, the Revealed End Time Study Note series. Click on this. So I'm not the smartest. And come to this intro series right here. At least watch these first three. They're Bible studies. It's not me with my face on the camera and just saying this and saying that. They're Bible studies, a 30-minute Bible study to understand the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to, if you've ever questioned why the Gospels have the same stories, but yet they're spoken in, in such different, varied ways that they don't line up. They can't line up. It doesn't make sense. They seem like discrepancies. This ministry has the revelation and the answer of it for you. And the answer is, Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church who will go through seals, which, which represents the world and the house of Israel grafted in. The Gentiles, I mean, grafted in with the house of Israel, scattered throughout the earth. And Matthew is to Judah. That's what you're going to understand. You're going to see that things like this, a video down here called pre, mid, and post. You're going to see that pre, mid, and post are all true. Pre-trib, the Luke group. Mid-trib, in the seventh year of seals, the Mark group. And post-trib, at the beginning, at the end of the sixth, beginning of the seventh year of trumpets, which is the 14th year, is the Matthew group when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. Pre, mid, and post are all true. Once you begin to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, and you see things like Christ going into the cross, and, and in Luke's Gospel, he's arrayed in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. In Mark, he's arrayed in purple. In Matthew, he's arrayed in scarlet. Were they colorblind? No, they weren't. These are the types of things you're going to understand. And then when you realize that, you're going to say, oh my goodness, the discourses are speaking a little different, and Luke's is very different. There must be something going on there. It sure is, and you're going to understand that in the 11th video. But before you get there, you're going to want to understand that now that you begin to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you're going to want to understand the end time tribulation time frame. And it is 14 years, not seven. It is 14 years. Mark's is seven. Mark's, uh, Mark's discourse is seven years of seals. Matthew's is seven years of trumpets. Luke's is the first 40 to 50 days. That is Luke's discourse. It's the it's what 2 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about when Paul says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. He was in Christ and he goes to the third heaven. And then there was a second group that was kind of like the first, but they weren't in Christ like the first one. And that one says, was caught up. That one is the rapture of the great multitude, they go to paradise. And then you read down and he's talking as if he's here the third time, 14 years later. And he's saying, now I'm coming unto you. He's talking to Judah in the typology as Christ coming feet down on the Mount of Olives. How did all this get missed? First of all, it was because it was God's timing. It's been getting revealed here for five and a half years in this ministry. What you're gonna understand in this third video is this is a big video to reveal the understanding of how it was all missed 
and it's all because of Matthew. For centuries we've been taught from the Gospel of Matthew and to look at Mark and Luke as just little add-ins. The seminaries, the churches for hundreds of years have all taught from a foundation of Matthew. So why do you see seven years? Because everybody's perspective comes from Matthew. Why do they confuse pre, mid, and post? Because their perspective is Matthew. Why can you see scriptures talking pre, scriptures talking mid, and scriptures talking post? And yet nobody can discern it because they're all learning from a foundation of Matthew. This video is going to blow your mind when you begin to understand these first two. You can also go to the Ministry Revealed website. Like I said, you can go there and sign up to the forum for free. It'll just take you a few seconds to sign up and you can join us there. But you can also, from the website, download our book that we wrote um, and read chapter one and read chapter two. And it'll go into greater detail of the revelation of the gospels and the 14 years. I promise you, it will blow your mind and it will open scripture to you as you have never been able to understand it before. I promise you, every moment of your time in it will be worth it. And that's what has brought us. That's where it all started. Knowingly, something happened in my understanding on September 8th, 2017. That was the moment I began to understand something else was going on within the Gospels. And everything from that point forward has exploded. We were talking about, uh, in a recent video, we've been talking about this for over four and a half years, that when the population of the world hits 8 billion people, that will be the moment at that birth of that 8 billionth person, the escape will take place. The UN said it happened November 15th, but it's their best guess. The US counts it out. The US one believes the, the world population will reach 8 billion somewhere around June or July or something like that. So we're in this window of when it will actually be. And I showed, and the reason I bring it up, we saw that um, uh, uh, Dana Coverstone had, a, had that vision dream, and he saw that the, the, the covers of all the magazines were saying 8 billion, 8 billion, 8 billion. Why did it matter? Because it was revelation through scripture that I was able to discern that the, the escape group, the pre-trib group, would be, I believe, 144 million people, which will be 10% of the church. The 10% first fruits of the wheat harvest being taken out first. The first fruits of the wheat harvest is the old wheat. It is the Feast of Weeks. But Jesus told us in John 4, it's going to be four months early it'll be ready. That was the new year of trees <laughs> that equaled four years and then 70 years began and it ended at the new year of trees. Or was it the new year of trees? You see, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to share that. That's part of the excitement. So you see, and, and so what does, what did it equal? When I realized it was 144 million and I said, okay, at 144 million, if I took 8 billion and I did 2%, 1.9, 1.8, oh my goodness, 1.8%. About 2% of the population of the world is really 1.8% of the population of the world at 8 billion will be 144 million people. And it will equal 10% of the true church. They claim now there's 2 point something billion. No, it isn't. It's probably closer to 1.5 billion or 1.44 billion people truly claiming Christ. But they're not all ready. They're not all watching. It is the ready, watching, diligently seeking, repentant, loving. Those that are spirit-filled that are the pre-trib bride of Christ. Those that go first. They are the first fruits of the wheat harvest. The great multitude harvest portion happens in the seventh year of seals. They're what's called the new wheat that is harvested late summer into early fall. It's absolutely incredible. It is absolutely incredible. And there's a reason why I shared with you this, this 8 billion again and, and how that revelation and why it was so important. And here we were just sharing the 8 billion with Dana Coverstone. 
He doesn't know what we talk about. We've proven these things biblically. We we proved that it were, or we showed from that count that it was about 2% or 1.8% of the population of the world. That would be 10% of the church. And then what did we find? This was years ago. Then we came across Bob Jones. Bob Jones, who had gone to heaven. And when he went to heaven, he wasn't supposed to die, right? He was a prophet. And the Lord told him that he, he wouldn't die, that the enemy couldn't kill him. Well, he would die later in, in his later years. But that in this time, while well, he had to do this work, he died in 2014 in, in his age. But this was back in the 70s or 80s. He ends up dying, going to heaven. And when he was in heaven, at the moment, at the instant of his death, he saw there was about five people in his line going into heaven. And he was allowed to look back. And when he looked back, he said it was about 98% going in the other direction and only about 2% going to heaven. I didn't watch that first and then go decide how I was going to do it. No, that came later. Then there was another lady who understood and talked about 10% and the harvest going first. Exactly. That is the Lord God's harvest model. First fruits, 10%, main harvest, then corners and gleaning. It's unbelievable. And, and I'm talking about Bob Jones and bringing that up for a reason. <clears throat> because there's even more excitement building, brothers and sisters. It's awesome. Okay? We know where we are. I'm talking to you right here from February 11th. But we were looking at Tuba Shavat. So why are we still excited? How, what do you mean there's, there's, a, there's a scripture that gives us the date? Possibly, right? If this is the time, then that's the scripture. But the only way to understand it is in the mystery of the revelation. It is, it is in understanding <coughs> who the gospels are speaking to. It's in understanding that there's 14 years. It's in understanding that there are books in the Bible that have opened in this ministry that reveal what we call chapters to years. Where is it? Chapters to years. See, like Hosea, 14 chapters, they reveal within them clues and understanding to future prophecy, end time prophecy. Zechariah as well. Zechariah is to Jews. Hosea is to the Gentiles. Israel, grafted in Gentiles, right? And Zechariah is to Judah. Just so happens, Zechariah is talking about the 70th year. These 70 years. We've covered John Acts. We've covered all of these things before. It's incredible. Well, it's going to get even better. It's going to get even better. It's going to blow your mind. Like I said, brothers and sisters, this comment, comment started getting me going down this track. And you want to know why? Well, hold on tight. <laughs> I almost went there. I'm not ready to go there for you yet. Because I want to share something else. Because I was leading you guys with this to, to this Bob Jones and to all this other stuff. I want to share this with you about Bob Jones. Remember, we were talking about this back in 2020 with the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? Bob Jones' viral prophecy claims... The Kansas City Chiefs win a uh, win is a sign of revival coming. We've been we talked about this a lot, and Bob Jones has had major hundreds of prophetic words come to pass, hundreds of prophetic words, and in this one, he told this guy who is it Sean he had written it on Facebook, but he told um, about this. Uh, um, prophecy with the Kansas City Chiefs, he told them that when it happens, he had told it to about 10, 15 guys who had heard it. And this was back in the 80s. And it told these guys. And what did he tell them? He said, Bob, jo Bob Jones heard from God that the Chiefs would go to the Super Bowl and win it. He shared that when they won, it would be a sign of coming end time revival. Guess what? They won, right? They won in 2020. We were all gung-ho, man. We were like, yes. Everybody was watching, right? 
we thought we had finally understood that extra year and so forth for for trying to understand the 70 years of israel and time came and went some people tried to justify the revival with sean faust and and other guys out there that wasn't it it hasn't happened yet because what do we know about the end time revival it is going to begin with the apostolic age brothers and sisters it is going to begin the apostolic age what is the beginning of the apostolic age the church of ephesus the church of ephesus at the end of days it'll be the end of the laodicean age and the beginning of the end time seven churches playing out over the 14 years which is also revealed in the book which is also talked about in the uh in the intro series you will see it about the seven churches these are mysteries of the seven churches that people have been searching for centuries to understand their prophetic end time meaning it's revealed here in this ministry and you couldn't have gotten it without the gospels revealed without the timing of years revealed we have talked on this apostolic age beginning with what the lord breathing the spirit onto the apostles as john chapter 20 as the beginning of the 50 days from john chapter 20 into luke chapter 24 into acts chapter 1 and 2. that is the typology of the beginning of the end of days well we all thought it was coming in 2020 didn't we do you know what 2020 season was for the chiefs it was the 1920 season so what if we count that out 1920 2021 21 22 22 23. how many years is that from when they won four years ago what are, what are we looking at for israel right what, are, what were we looking at from from leviticus 19 in the beginning of four and then from the fifth year forward is there 70 starting what else did we know on the other end that it was 70 starting back then and then it would be what three years nothing on the fig tree i've been coming and then the fourth year dung it about and then what cut it down four years four years we all thought this was the kansas city chiefs win into the apostolic age we're getting ready to go nope but guess who's playing in the super bowl four years later you guessed it the kansas city chiefs the kansas city chiefs here's from the elijah list website something bob jones so see once once the the super bowl had gone and kansas city chiefs had won you know everybody was kind of naysaying and everything else but here we are again ready and watching now when i say this am i saying go bet money on kansas city chiefs you'd better not you would better not do we know this is actually going to be the year not with 100 percent certainty this is no thus saith the lord but from bob jones it was the lord that revealed it to him doesn't mean it's this one <laughs> but is it probably <laughs> yeah it probably is but what would a bet do for you right would you rather stay to use that bet or would you rather be watching and praying and going right so don't use this to go and bet on the kansas city chiefs okay listen to what the lord told bob jones or what bob jones said about it uh yeah this is what bob jones said about what the lord told him the chiefs win the super uh when the chiefs win the super bowl you will know that revival is about to come listen to this listen carefully God is raising up his apostolic chiefs. What is he doing? He's raising up his apostolic chiefs. It will be the time of the beginning of the apostolic age. Listen to what it said. Chiefs win. Revival is about to. Is about to come. 
and God is going to be raising up his apostolic chiefs. We have revealed here in this ministry that the time of the apostolic age beginning is from day one of the 50, <coughs> excuse me, at the escape of the preacher of Bride of Christ, which we know will begin on day one of 50. We've proven it, right? We've shown it right here. Let me let me give you guys a little reminder. I won't spend a lot of time on it because we just shared it, right? We shared how Luke chapter 14 is the revelation of the beginning of tribulation, the beginning of the 50 days. Healing of a man on a Sabbath, right? Made a man whole on the Sabbath. Then you've got what? So that's like a type of pre-trib. And then what do you got? The wedding feast. What was the wedding feast? Those who are going pre-trib. And what was it about? Those who will get to sit in the highest room. But we're not to go and sit in the highest room. We're to sit in the lowest room when we get there. And when you get there and you're there, sit in the lowest room. And if by chance you have the honor to be taken up to the highest room to go to that reclining place at the party meal, which is only used one time, which was where? In Luke chapter 9, before he returns eight days later. Then what happens when he returns from this wedding feast? He has a great banquet. Who does he have this banquet with? Those that will be rewarded at the resurrection of the just. Who are they? They are the Smyrna. They are the Smyrna group. That Smyrna group is the second group. That's the beginning of the 40 days when the Son of Man is here to start his 40 days. When he comes as what? To shine his light in the darkness. Right? What else do we know begins at the beginning of the apostolic age? The first attack in Israel. It'll be the northern attack in Israel on the two cities, right? Then when he comes at the beginning of the 40 days with the Smyrna group, the Luke 24 disciple group, who he will sit down and serve and eat with, and the 40 days begin. He's coming to shed his light in the darkness. We've shown that from so many areas. We've even shown it like in the John chapters to years, right? Seven easy years. Here he is with the woman talking about being stoned. Why does stoned mean anything? Remember the teaching on the apostolic age at, at Ephesus? Ephesus, they worshiped the goddess Diana, and the goddess Diana came from a meteorite that landed in Ephesus, and they created the D goddess Diana off of this stone, off of this meteorite <coughs> that fell in Ephesus. What does this matter to us? Because we know this stone that is only spoken about in Luke chapter 22, <coughs> excuse me, in Luke chapter 22, the stones cast, as Jesus is about to be taken into the hands of sinful men, it is the stones cast, the stones throw, which would mean this stones throw is going to take place in the midst of this week, this first seven to the eighth day during the apostolic age revival beginning. It'll probably be about three days before he comes as the Son of Man with those disciples to eat with them and so forth. It'll be about four days or so into this week of this apostolic age beginning. We've talked on that as well, haven't we? We know this is a part of the week. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, who better to be prepared as a group of people left to work? Uh, that, that remnant bride remaining to work, who were 14ers in history, who is a group of 14ers in present, who know with, with a degree of certainty through the revelation of the Gospels and His Word from beginning to end that could be prepared <clears throat> seeing tens of millions vanish that could be prepared seeing israel attacked in the north that could be prepared seeing a stone's throw a meteor coming that could be prepared girding themselves about when he will come to shine his light in the darkness to meet with them hello <clears throat> excuse me you know in this, uh, you know, in John chapter 8, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, that cleared. That stone's throw, that woman, here he comes for 40 days. And what does he say? He's coming to shine that light in the darkness. What happens when we go to Isaiah? We've talked about this one a lot. Northern Israel is attacked in the two places in the north. And then he comes as what? Great light to shine in the darkness. There he is. A child is born unto us. And then what do you have? Syria attacks on the 50th day. Syria attacks on the 50th day. But when the Son of Man, remember, when the Son of Man's 40 days are over, there's three days when the compassing about takes place, right? There's a compassing about, and then at the end of that 50 days, boom, the attack will take place by Syria. All of this is fitting into this time we're talking about right here. What is the apostolic age? What does the apostolic age begin with? The apostles, of course. The apostles, of course. This was four years ago. And this is tomorrow. Am I saying it's going to begin tomorrow? No. How about this? How about this? How about we read the order of this? When the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Okay, so what would come first? Maybe the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Then it says, then you will know that revival is about to come. Okay? They win and then revival is about to come. And then when it comes, what is it? It's the raising up of the apostolic age. Raising up of the apostolic age. What? Chiefs win. Soon after, apostolic age, 50 days beginning on the 15th of February. Wait, I thought you said it had to be Tuba Shavat. I did. I thought you said there was a date in scripture. I did. <laughs> so I got to have some coffee. <laughs> it's so exciting, man. It's over the top. Okay, now you guys got that. Let me close that out. I got a lot of windows and my, I got, I got Stellarium open and pictures. Let me play this video. And as I was bringing it into the garage and setting it up after showing my wife, look what I noticed. 7, 17. <laughs> 7, 17. <clears throat> 7, 17 is the revelation, right? Seven years as Passover. One as the Feast of Weeks, which is observed first, and then seven to Tabernacles and the eighth day, which is the Jubilee and the beginning of the millennial reign. It's so incredible. <laughs> 717 is the video length. Now, I'm playing it on half speed. I mean, uh, one and a half speed. So if you're listening faster, you might want to slow it down. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it all. Um, it'll He talks pretty fast, so it'll go a little bit faster. You might be used to. But you can also you can always go to International House of Prayer. I'll jump in in between sometimes because you see this is now after like this is probably a year and a half, two years after, or about a year or so after the 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 Chiefs had won, and the Apostolic Age never happened yet. And so he's not justifying that it didn't happen. He's kind of saying, well, I never heard that prophecy, but this guy was involved with Bob Jones for ten years, okay, but he wasn't a part of that group that heard about bob jones and that prophecy but he talks about other prophecies as i did in relation to not prophecy but what he saw in heaven being about two percent and we had the same revelation of about two percent being 1.8 which would be the group that goes to the third heaven at the pre-trib escape and he had about 20 or 25 things that bob jones spoke that he was a part of that literally all happened to a T, even though Bob Jones spoke on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prophetic things. He just doesn't know. He's not a part of all of them. But he gave a teaching, he said, over 10 hours of teachings 
over one hour teachings he talked about all of these things that happened that bob jones spoke about that happened that he was a part of and happened exactly the way he said it so i'm going to play this so you get a reference but i want you to know going in he doesn't know what we now know when he did this video nor does he know this season in time that we're in right now <clears throat> is he probably excited or or maybe looking forward because the chiefs are there again i'm sure all of these guys are to some extent you know the chiefs went there again in what 2021 i think or something like that but they lost i think it was to the buccaneers that was probably one that people were looking at i, I didn't even remember i don't even think i was i was considering it back then but all of a sudden for this one it comes back to our attention it's brought back to our mind at a time when we were looking at Tuba Shavat, and then something came to me in understanding as I was just in, in prayer with the Lord. And then the following day, I'm reminded of this Bob Jones prophecy. Do you realize the Super Bowl is usually held on the first Sunday of February? But what happened? Why is it on this one? they extended the season brothers and sisters by one game do you understand that if it was here it probably would have thrown things off than if it was here you say well the lord's not working through football the lord can work through anything and everything don't be silly hundreds of millions of people are going to be watching the Super Bowl. Do you think it's a coincidence that in January, oh my goodness, I could tell you guys something about that handprint that was found. Oh my goodness, I was watching a show, I shared it with Mike. We flipped out. It was unbelievable what was in this show, a little known show, and it was at the start of episode three. I just about lost it. I just about lost it. I couldn't help it. I, had, I ran in to tell my wife. I shared it with her. I shared it with Mike. And he was just like, oh, my goodness. So that hand being found uh, right on the wall or or the the movie, right? The the new Left Behind anti Rise of Antichrist coming out in Jan that came out in January. And here we are at the Super Bowl. You think, well, big deal about the Super Bowl, except we have a prophetic word of Ken with the Kansas City Chiefs and that when the Kansas City Chiefs you'll know that the time is about to come that the apostolic age is going to be is going to begin and we know that the apostolic age begins the 50 days which is at the escape the attack in northern Israel <laughs> go get ready I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to sleep oh man I'm telling you I don't even know how I'm going to sleep these next few days that's how excited I am and you're going to see why because that comment was what caught my attention when I saw where it was. But I still couldn't justify an, an over exuberant excitement of believing this is really potentially it until that piece was dropped into my spirit. And I said, wait a second. And that's when I went, oh, my Lord, could this really be it? You see? with all of these things that have been happening lately from the hand to the movie coming out to to the chiefs now being in the super bowl again to it being one week later there's other things that came about too you know that we have a sister here in this ministry who i had never heard about this i didn't know this was coming but there's a christian super bowl ad coming a jesus super bowl ad coming and it's through a group called he gets us and this is an this is a a whole uh jesus campaign that they paid 20 million dollars for this super bowl ad we have a sister in this ministry who is a part of and involved in this campaign she says you haven't heard me from me for a while i am i am still watching the videos i'm still diligent and everything but i'm involved in this he gets us ad campaign and she told us that it was going to play during the super bowl well, how about that? It just so happens that it, that's going to be placed in this year's Super Bowl ad, ads, along with everything else that's taken place. 
Are you kidding me? And do you know what it is? It's because of the churches and, and how the churches have just milked blah, right? Just lukewarm blah of, of, of Laodicean garbage in so many, not all, in so much of the church that this one, this ad is about bringing them to the truth of Christ, standing on the truth, his word. And it just so happens it's in this Super Bowl, which is one week later, which is in the midst of all these things, with a prophetic word at a time when we were looking for the 70 of Tuba Shavat. But I still would not have been this excited had it not been for one, the comet, but for two, the other piece that dawned on me. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> it's such an exciting time. It's so exciting. Yeah, the seven churches, right? Man, oh man, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about this. It's it's in the book from what, two and what is it? Maybe a year and a half ago? Coming up on two years in March? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> right? This is the relation of the apostles chosen at the beginning of 50 days and the Lord leaves for the wedding. Remember that? Let's go to John chapter 20. Let's get into some more scripture. These are things we've taught on that we've understood and we've shared. Mary Magdalene, Magdalene, right? She has the representation with her name as in towers. We talked about that whole thing with towers, right? With the meaning of her name. You follow the meaning of her name. See the tower and it leads you to the towers and the bed of flowers. And this leads you to the song of Solomon. I believe this is the typology of the pre-trib escape of the bride. Then what does he do? He meets with the apostles. He meets with 10 of them and look at what it says. Then the same day at evening. So if he resurrected early the same day at evening, means he's going from day to day. So what happens? The door shut and what did he do? He breathed the Holy Ghost on them. Then what did he do? Thomas wasn't there and then he returns. What? Eight days again, he returns. So you have 50, seven days, he returns at the eighth day. Thomas is there and now Thomas gets to see them. He meets with the apostles briefly and then what does he do? He goes to the Luke group, the Luke 24 group. And what happens in the Luke 24 group? You have the two on the road to Emmaus. You have him sitting and eating with them. He serves them, which he only does with this group. And then what happens? He vanishes and he comes back. He's in the midst. These guys are all freaking out, knowing they had, they had met him. They had realized it when he broke the bread. And then what happens? He tells them about the things in the law of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, the prophets and the Psalms, all the things that we have learned prophetically in them. He's coming to open their understanding completely. And look at what it says. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. This is about to happen to that group on the eighth day as he serves and eats with them and opens to them their understanding. You see, this is the Smyrna group. This is the group that begins the 40 days that will be with them, at, with the Son of Man, as he is here, as he said in Luke 11, as Jonah was to the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be. It was prophecy. The apostles remain. Remember, they're the foundation layers. While the physical foundation of the new temple in Jerusalem is going to be laid during the time of seals, during about the midst of seals, after it had been destroyed, there will be a decree and they will go out and they will have some brought back and they will begin to rebuild. But they will only get the foundation laid during seals. While there is a physical foundation being laid during seals, there is this apost apostolic age that broke out at the beginning of 50 days. And the revival is going to go throughout the earth, seeing all these things that have happened. Living through then World War III that will begin after Jerusalem is attacked. And the spiritual foundation 
is being laid. They will remain during seals. In Smyrna, they are the ones who follow him for 40 days. When the 40 days are over and the Lord leaves as the Son of Man, they go and they will meet where the apostles and where these others are gathered in the same typology, wherever that might be, however the Lord plays that out. And they will then receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost on the 50th day. And from there will be sent out through the earth. And boom, Jerusalem will be attacked and destroyed. And the 14 years will begin. These are things we have taught on. These are things we have understood. It's all directly connected. And we know it's to the beginning of tribulation. It is all connected to the beginning. And we believed the beginning to be Tuba Shavat because it was the four and then 70. You see that? But what happened? Right? What, what about John? What about what we were told in John chapter 4, what Jesus said? Right? We, we had this whole story of the well. We had the whole story of Samaritan, Samarian, the this, this Samaritan woman. And all of this led us to what? what? What did Samaria, Samaritan, what did all of this mean? It meant, <coughs> excuse me, it means watch. It means to watch. It means to be on guard. This is all about the almond tree. Right? He meets her at a well. We did the whole story about the well. In fact, we saw this all coming about and it began back here, the eye of the well. And then this one revealed even more <clears throat> because we went to the story of Rebecca. And in the story of Rebecca, what happened? The, the story of the well. Right, he the, the Holy Ghost goes out and meets her at the well, right? The Eleazar, the helper, the typology of the Holy Ghost, and he meets her at the well. And what is it? What did what did the well mean? In uh, it, it meant pit like a well, but it also meant in a couple of them it was defined as ayin. Ayin. What was ayin? Seventy. This is the eye of Taurus on the other side. If you're looking up at the head of Taurus, this is the one called I. Ayin means I. And in Hebrew, it means I. Pretty crazy, right? It means I. And it's 70. And it's the 16th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. This is the right eye of Taurus as we're looking up, but it's the left eye. If Jesus was in the middle, this would be the left eye to his left but it's the right eye to us. There's beginning, Aleph, which means beginning, which we know represents Taurus, the beginning, which is why we were looking for the time of Taurus, which we even discussed in the last live show, because we knew this time had to be connected to Savan, because it's Taurus is Savan. We understood these things, which is why when Tuba Shavat apparently had passed, I was saying, well, I guess we're going to the connections with Savan. Because Taurus is the beginning. Christ is called the beginning. And the beginning is Taurus. You following? We've taught on these things, right? We've taught on these things. Well, how about this? We were showing that when Christ comes to start his 40 days, he's coming as light, right? We saw that in Isaiah 9. We saw it in John 8. We see it in a number of other places. And we've taught on it. So when he comes to start his 40 days, he's coming as light to save his light group creation, which is Mark, which is the world. And we see this was the spirit portion. This is when he became light. John chapter 1 told us the same thing. In the beginning was the word, the spirit portion. Then the word became light, and then the light became flesh. And that's Genesis chapter 2. The three creations, the three group, Luke, Mark, Matthew. 
spirit light flesh bride world judah spirit light flesh so when he comes to start his 40 days he's coming to shed light in the darkness well check this out do you know that if this is day one of 50 this is the eighth day want to see something interesting on our gregorian calendar it's february the second month 22nd day well isn't that something for those of you who have been following me in this ministry for a while you will have heard the different things that happened right what are the things that had happened what are two big things especially one in particular was of course the eye of taurus right what was this eye of taurus all about right the eye of taurus brothers and sisters called aldebaran it's called the bullseye right it's called the bullseye it is this eye it is the 14th brightest star and bullseye is a representation of 50 points it means 50. it's a red it's a big red star and it's the 14th brightest star in the sky and it was pointing us to this ministry and connected to Taurus. Al DeBaron, and my name is Al Dubray or Alan Dubray. People call me Al Dubray. It's wild. The connections are incredible. And the fact that it's the 14th brightest star and the revelation of this ministry is 14 years. And before the 14 years, there's 50 days. And the 50 days is represented by Al DeBaron, which represents right on target, which means bullseye, which is 50, and it's represented as the 14th brightest star. Come on. It's over the top. It's over the top. It's a big deal to this ministry, right? You go do some searching on Al DeBaron and that eye. It has the term of the follower. It's also called one of the four royal stars. In fact, the royal star, the four royal stars, Aldebaran is one of them. And that Aldebaran bullseye, which is one of the four royal stars, is the one that represents the east and is overwatch of the east. And it's believed that there are people for all four that are represented throughout history, but they've never found the one who represents the Aldebaran star. And whoever is represented in this Aldebaran star, they say it's the one with the eye of revelation. Aldebaran is called the eye of revelation as well. What? This is craziness. Well, remember this star, it's what? The Eastern Royal Star. What does that have to do with anything? Well, February 22nd, 222. Hello. Any of you guys been wondering about 222 for many years? I've shared that 222 has been in my life since just before my teen years. It all began, I'm not going to go into the entire story of it, but it all began with me having memories of seeing it when I was a kid and my I grew up Catholic with my mom and my sister. <laughs> it didn't last long until I was like 13 and I was done. But my mom, her little giving envelope was, her number was 222. And it just stuck with me. I don't know why I saw, I saw lots of numbers throughout my life, but it stuck with me. And then throughout my life, I would see it and I would be aware of seeing 222 throughout my life. So much so that my son was born February 22nd of 2003. My son is going to be 20 years old on February 22nd, 222. Many of you have had 222, but that's a, a, a glimpse of my story of 222. What does 222 have to do with anything? Well, it represents the what? God is my light, right? It represents Uriel. Uriel, God is my light. Let's go to it. Let's go to the Hebrew 222. And you see that it represents the flame of God and it's Uriel. Well, the flame of God, look at what it represents, okay? it's It all comes from 222. Look at as you go further into the root word, look at what it represents. The east. What? The east being the region of the light. 
What? Aldebaran, brothers and sisters, the star of the spirit directed us to, revealed as 14th brightest and represented the number 50, which is in the head of Taurus, being one of the four royal stars, which is called the Eye of Revelation, which has been missing in understanding in all of history. For 5,000 years, they've been trying to understand it. And it is represented by East. And it's 222. Do you know what 222 goes to? Of course, it goes to the Hebrew word 215. Cause to illuminate, make light, shine, right? So what does it represent? Light. Do you know when Christ said, let there be light? This is the typology of him coming to begin his 40 days, right? Him coming for the world. Comes from what? 216, the Hebrew word 216 when he was when he came to be light. Illumination, happiness, bright, clear. And look where it comes from. The same root word from 222, cause to be made light. Why, did, why does that have any interest to what I'm saying? Because February 22nd would be the eighth day. What? What? The eighth day would be February 22nd or 222 two, if the 15th of February is day one and the beginning of the apostolic age that would begin with a prophetic understanding from the Lord to Bob Jones. They win the Super Bowl. And about that time, shortly after, the apostolic age would begin. And we know in this ministry and have revealed it for a few years that the apostolic age will begin during the seven-day wedding week at the escape of the bride of Christ. The apostolic age will begin and the Lord himself will return as the son of man, not running around saying, I'm the Lord, but will perform signs and miracles and wonders. And the world will think he's the Antichrist for the most part. But some will believe. And when he comes at this time on 222, which is also connected to this ministry as the eye of Taurus is connected to this ministry. It's 222 when he comes what? When he comes what? Let's just make sure we remember that. When he comes to what? When he comes on the eighth day, he's coming to what? Shed his light in the darkness. What on earth is happening here, brothers and sisters? What on earth is taking place here? We are seeing the pendant of the Lord connected to ministry revealed. I believe. Not of thus saith the Lord, but I believe, as we have already understood, that it is connected to Tuba Shavat. And you're probably now saying, you keep saying that, Alan, but how on earth is that possible? None of this, as we have taught it, has changed. None of it has changed. I'm going to show it to you. Hold your horses. It's coming. Because remember this comet? Right? Remember this comet? Everything that, that fired me up to start looking again and saying, okay, we might still be in this? Well, let's go have a look. Let's see where this comet is. Let me show you something. Here's this comet. You know what's really cool? I didn't know how to do it. I'm like, how on earth can I get this comet to show up in Stellarium? I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. But all you got to do is a YouTube search, right? I searched YouTube and a guy walks you right through it. Good thing because I would have never figured out how to go into everything he was going into. But let me show you something. This is going to blow your mind. Okay? Where did it go? Let me bring it back. It's gone too far. Where are you, Comet? There he is. Okay, let's follow this Comet. Let me take the, the Earth off. Okay, and we're going to follow this comet back. I want you to see something. Oh, there we go. He went over here. We know to an extent where it's going, right? But I want you to see something. We know it's going to the crown. Remember the guy we shared in the video 
the story of the crown right the lord is coming with his reward remember that okay i want you to see what happens check this out here it is at the crown and it was in the crown look at how slow it's going with each click is a day okay look at this slow 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 remember this is it right here okay it's in this four right here it's going super slow and then all of a sudden watch what happens it's like super speed okay well keep watching it keeps going super speed super speed super speed until it gets to the eye of taurus and then everything starts to whoops and then everything starts to slow down again watch this see how it's going slow look at this boom it's gone see it's coming in fast coming in fast coming in fast gets to taurus and it slows down brothers and sisters you know where we are right now here we are today it's near mars there's the 12th there's the 13th there's the 14th there's the 15th brothers and sisters on the 15th of february the eye of taurus see this eye right here this eye, i don't want to click on it because this is so small i don't know if i'll be able to find it this eye right here see this real bright one right here this real bright one right here is aldebaran taurus it is the 5014 taurus eye this one right here this one right here is the i in i which means i whereas this one means bullseye and brothers and sisters the comet on february 15th is going to be at the eye of taurus now to many like i've said it may not mean much although people are watching but to us i believe it to be an absolute sign to the 14ers of ministry revealed who were given the word by the holy ghost right on target which means bullseye bullseye and when we discovered that we were we get we saw right away it meant bullseye it related to the eye of taurus and it turned out it represents the number 50 in the hebrew alphabet and it's the 14th letter of the hebrew alphabet which is noon and noon is 1450 and it's the 14th brightest star in the sky it is the ministry revealed bullseye and this comet that has been so spectacularly followed and and significant in the sign of how it's been moving through the constellations on the 15th of february the comet is at the eye of taurus to us brothers and sisters that is i believe and truly absolutely truly a sign from the lord we're the 14thers guys we've shared how smyrna were the 14thers in history they were days we are years they stood for the 14 days the 14th day of passover huh well isn't that interesting they stood for the 14th day of passover because they are 14thers we are 14ers for the 14 years in the revelation of tribulation do you think maybe there's a connection as we've shared this over the years do you think it's maybe possible well what if their 14th and our 14 of years what if they start at the same time 
<laughs> what if the Lord God is lining it up on their calendar, on, on the Hebrew calendar, yet on his time? Right? Yet on his time, it's the end of the 50 days. It's unbelievable. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Let me close out some of these tabs so I don't keep going to them. All right. We got the prophecy of Bob Jones. That was so awesome. All right. So remember when we go back into, whoops, when we go back into John chapter four, right? How could, how could this have not, how, how could this suddenly be nothing? This is prophetic. It's about the harvest being ready four months early, right? The fields are already white and ready to harvest. The only connection to that with the white would either be a connection with snow on the ground, which Enoch was, or it would be connected to the almond tree when it blossoms and it looks like snow on the ground. And both of them happen at the same time because it's in February. The connection to all of it is the receiving of wages for those bearing fruit. How could this not be connected? How did we suddenly have to say, oh, I guess this has to be set aside. We have to just throw it all aside in that whole 70 count and, and the 50 days beginning and then 50 days. Well, Remember how important Taurus was? If this is the sign for Taurus, you see, Taurus with the sun isn't going to happen till June, right? Late May into June. So if, if it's that late, yet we know the beginning is Taurus, but it's going to be four months early, would it be possible that the Lord would give us a sign in Taurus? He did. He did. It's right here. And look at the day that it takes place on. February 15th. It takes place on February 15th. But how on earth does this make it four months early? Because Tuba Shavad has already passed. It's like 10 days prior. How on earth is this possible? Right? How about this? When we go to Zechariah chapter 1 to Judah. This was something we were recently sharing, right? How is it that this vision of the horsemen in Zechariah chapter, starting in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 7, upon the 24th day, the 4 and 20th day of the 11th month, which is the month of Shabbat, so it's telling you it's the 11th month, the Hebrew month of Shabbat. That date, as we all know, is this date right here. The 24th day of the 11th month, which is Shabbat. Period. Not maybe, not kind of, this is it. But what are we missing? How does this relate? What is it talking about? Well, listen to what it says. I had never looked at it with this perspective before because we were looking at it like the like the red horse rider, like the, the, the second horseman going out. But it wasn't just the red horse, right? It was the red horse stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind them were their red horses speckled and white. So he wasn't alone, and we know these are heavenly. These aren't enemy things, right? The red horse, by the way, the red horse rider and, and all the four horsemen, they're not the bad guys. They're from heaven, right? It's the other characters for on the earth and, and uh, um, their representation from Luke chapter 7, uh, uh, from Daniel chapter 7. Those are the enemies playing out these things on the earth. These are released from heaven, right? The, the four horsemen. So we see the four and the first one is, is what? A red horse a red horse 
who is reporting, as we come to see in a moment, who is reporting that they've, let's keep reading, okay? But remember, it is a red horse, and he's got others with him. And it says, then said I, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And, and the man stood among the myrtle trees, and the man that stood among the myrtle trees, let me say that again. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. Okay? So they weren't just out that one day. They've been going out throughout the earth. And it's saying I have, they have gone out to and fro through the earth and everything is still in at rest. It doesn't mean there's not a war here and a war there. But generally, the earth is at rest. On what day? The 24th day of the 11th month of Shabbat. Well, what year? Well, let's keep reading. And uh, verse 11. And they answered the angel of the Lord uh, and said, uh, da, 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 and they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth is still and is at rest. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which thou hast had indignation these 70 years? These 70 years. Meaning what? It's still in the 70th year. What do we know about this? If the Lord is having events happen on the Hebrew calendar, but it'll be on his times because they've gone in error. Don't we know that? Haven't we shared that with Matthew and with Mark, right? With the church, which is why that commercial through the Super Bowl is so vital because we know the church has erred as well. Let's see, where is that? In Luke 20. So I think it's in Luke 12, uh, Mark 12. Watch this. Remember this? The woman with seven husbands, right? Who is, this, who is she going to be in the resurrection when they shall live? Whose husband? Who is she going to be with? Mark 12, 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do you not therefore err because you know not the scriptures? He's talking to the world. He's talking to the church, the house of Israel, the Gentiles grafted in. This is the church. They do err not knowing the scriptures. That's why the timing of that commercial is perfect. What about Matthew? In Matthew 23, or is it 22? I think 23. Maybe it's 22. One of these. One of these, one of these. Ah, there we go. In Matthew 22, same type of thing, right? Who, who is she going to be married to of these seven husbands that she's had? In Matthew 22, 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Do you know in Luke, he says none of those things? There is never a condemnation in Luke. We've talked about that many times. Mike over at 165 talked about that many times. There is never a condemnation to his bride, those who are diligently seeking, but to the Mark and Matthew group, to the Gentiles, the church, right? grafted in with israel and to the jews to judah they are in error and don't realize the error of their understandings they are in error they are in error of their understandings but if this is the 70th year which would go to nissan yet they've got nissan one here is it really there you see, the Lord will have events take place and is telling them on this time because it's their calendar and the events will take place at these times. But is it because that's where that time is on his, in the understanding of a feast or a festival? Well, no, because they've erred. If they've erred, then when this, let's see, what does it say? When this red horse rider has gone out, 
and he's reporting back and he was with others red and speckled white does it mean that oh they just went out that one day or have they been going out throughout the earth for a period of time and they're now reporting back to the lord and when are they reporting back to the lord on the 24th day of the 11th month in the 70 years what else did we just show was red brothers and sisters what else did we just show was red the aldebaran star the aldebaran star the great red giant star is it related to the eye of taurus and the sign of the comet at it do we literally have a date that we can understand in scripture as i have told you for a long time well i i didn't talk about it for a long time because it was just i was scratching my head all the time how could it be the 24th day of the 11th month even though it's saying 11th month sabbath uh, shabbat telling you it is the hebrew calendar 11th month so we can't really count from taurus and say well the 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 fifth month is really the 11th month no because it said shabbat so this is happening on the 24th day of the 11th month in the 70th year and here we are revealed this is the 70th year and the 24th day of the 11th month which is shabbat is at hand and this conversation relates to a red horse and at this time we're looking for taurus and the comet is at that big red star of aldebaran the 1450 begins 50. you see the the image here is beginning so at 70 wherever the new year of trees is begins so in taurus so isn't it amazing that in taurus the comet is here in taurus at aldebaran called the beginning called the revelation and the comet is there we have a sign months before it's actually taurus because he said it would be four months early this is blowing my mind and then what happens it's at rest these 70 years and then he says what in zechariah 1 14 so the angel that communed with me said unto me cry thou saying thus saith the lord of hosts i am jealous for jerusalem and for zion with a great jealousy i am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease for i was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction and what do we know what happens he's saying he's yet going to come rebuild yet come rebuild and then what happens they're destroyed they've been scattered tribulation happens when the destruction of jerusalem happens at the 50th day okay this is the warning of what the beginning the beginning of the 50 days the beginning of the 50 days the the red eye or maybe that aldebaran uh, uh, taurus eye is the representation of that red horse rider who is reporting back to the lord and there's the lord saying everything's at ease and it's on the 20 uh 24th day of the 11th month which is shabbat and look what happens oh yeah it's all at ease bang time is at hand but you're still saying all right that's all fine and great alan but if if that's the the time and everything's at hand how are you going to account for this being tuba shabbat That's a great question, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness, how am I going to account for Tuba Shabbat? I didn't have to. I believe the Spirit dropped it in my spirit. As I've been pondering and sitting in the garage, as I was telling you guys earlier, and considering and thinking on these things, I said, Lord, what, what could we have missed? How is this possible? How did we get past Tuba Shabbat? Are you telling me we're going to have to go all the way to Taurus? 
to the 15th of Sivan, a true feast of weeks, and then do the count, or this is either the scape, or we're going to have to do the count as Passover and go from there. Because it was much more lined up. Understanding the count to Nisan, when we know your year's end, is going to be connected to Abib. You see, guys, we've spoken about Abib. Remember the the 14thers? The 14thers, their dispute with the church and their persecution for it and being called 14thers was because they stuck to the truth of when Abib, when the barley was going to be ready, when Abib was going to be ready. That they said, this is the 14th day of the month. And we are going to stick to the true 14th day of the month, regardless of whether the church says, hey, we're going to do it on Sunday. Or the Jews say, right, they were saying Passover and the church wanted to observe it on the Sunday. That's what it was. And they said, no, regardless. And Polycarp, who was the head of the church of Smyrna, said, who was also a 14er, said, no, this is the truth and we're going to stick to it. And they agreed to disagree with Rome, and Rome stayed here, and the 14th or stayed to the 14th of Nisan. Because why? Because they stuck to what? A beeb. And a lot of people still want to dispute it, but if you go to Deuteronomy 16, it tells you a beeb. Passover, the month of a beeb. And it talks about the corn, right? The corn, the wheat, the abib. So here we have our ancient brothers and sisters from 2,000 years ago sticking as disciples in Smyrna to the truth of Passover as 14ers. And here we are as 14ers talking about the 14 years and the revelation of the 14 years of the end of days. Do you think it would be out of line? that it begins at what the hebrews the hebrew calendar has on the hebrew calendar 14th day of nisan but this is something we've talked about right about a month and a half ago or so we were talking about this connection of the 24th day of shabbat and how the 50 days went to passover we spoke on this, but it says 50 days and then 14 years. And the 50 days had to be connected to this, this year's end, right? Remember this? Second Chronicles chapter 24. We know Syria is coming to attack. This is one of the scriptures. We saw it in Isaiah 9. When are they coming to attack? They're coming to attack at a year's end, a connection to an end of a year. One could be a year, like the actual year, and the other connected to the sun, okay? If this is connected to the actual year, then it would be connected to when Syria comes and attacks and destroys Jerusalem, which is at the end of 50 days, or at the 50 days. But when they come at the end of the year time, they don't attack right away. They're coming against them first. What do they do? They compass them about, remember? Remember Luke chapter 21? When they come, what are they doing? When the Son of Man is here for 40 days, he comes at the eighth day, which is day one of 40, and he's warning that Jerusalem is about to be compassed about and destroyed. Same, things he, same thing he says in Luke chapter 19. When he weeps over it, saying, if you had only known in this thy day, it was also prophetic for the is to come. What happens? And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And, listen to this, and let not them that are in the countries enter here into. Do you guys remember what this sounds like? Sounds like Aliyah, right? Yom Aliyah. 
Aliyah is, is the day that they observe when Jews from other nations would come and move into the land, right? Like Ethiopian Jews, uh, some from the Philippines and all sorts of places. And they move into Jerusalem. And there's a day that that's recognized as Yom Aliyah, okay? Do you think you're going to see that connected here today? Well, guess what? You are. If you guess yes, you're right. You're going to see it connected here as well. But what's he doing? When his 40 days end, so you see that he's warning that they're going to be compassed about, which means they're not going to be compassing about during his 40 days. They will be compassed about at the end of his 40 days, which is the 47th day, and it leaves three days. They'll be compassed about, they had better flee, and then destruction happens when? We just saw it at the year's end. Okay? Now, they, or sorry, they come at the year's end and then the destruction, right? We just saw that. They come at the year's end, they're going to compass about, and then the destruction happens on the 50th day, which would be the beginning of the 14 years. And if the beginning of the 14 years is connected to the 14thers, I find that incredibly coincidental. But I don't believe in coincidences. With everything else we're showing, you think that's a coincidence? No. Nope. But I can tell you something else. There's more to it. There's more to it because it all takes us back to the beginning of the story of how Tuba Shavat, how on earth can this still be Tuba Shavat? That's where the issue comes in, right? Well, let's go look at something. I'm going to close this now. We got You guys got that, right? So let me close that. Help the computer breathe a little bit. So, Tuba Shavat, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the date we have in Scripture when the report is given. This is the date when we have a sign of that, that very particular comet in the eye of Taurus, which is called the beginning. I want you guys to recognize this, right? It's at the eye of Taurus on the 15th. And that eye of Taurus, brothers and sisters, represents noon, which is the number 50 in Hebrew. Begins 50. Begins 50 and then the 14 years. It is there in the eye of Taurus. <laughs> which is four months early for Tuba Shavat at the snow or the white of the almond tree blossoms. And it's the beginning of 50. Begins with, so the comet arrives at the eye on the 50th. And on this date in scripture, the red horse rider, like the big red star of Aldebaran, is telling the Lord, that I have gone to and fro the earth and everything is quiet. And it represents beginning 50. When? 70. So all three. 70 would have to be, right? 70, 50, and beginning. Well, how about that? There it is in scripture, talking to the Lord. The comet arrives on this date to begin 50, but for that to happen, it would also actually have to be 70 of what? The festival of Tuba Shavat. The festival of Tuba Shavat. If we can show that it is, this entire pendant that the Lord was, was, was wearing and revealed us as this eye, I think it'd be safe to say, I believe it would be safe to say that we're here. Because it would also have to be the 70th, right? We would be in the 70th. It's the 70th of the Lord 
of Tuba Shavat, yet still in the 70th of Israel to Nisan. You see, that's how it could still be these 70 years because it's still in the 70th of Israel. You following? So how could it be 70 as Tuba Shavat? How could it be 50, which can only be when it's at the 70 of Tuba Shavat? And beginning, of course, because it would begin the 50. And we've got the comet at the eye. We have the Super Bowl and a prophetic word about when they win, which everybody was excited about four years earlier. What, what are we missing? Is this prophetic word for, for the Chiefs going to be fulfilled? At the time we got this comet at the eye of Taurus? I believe the one thing that was missing in all of this is something that is given to us in one of the apocrypha books that I believe probably every one of you have heard before, but I haven't heard anybody talking about it now. You see, why? Why why doesn't other why haven't others maybe talked about it? Because to Shavat, we have understood is the connection to John chapter 4 and four months earlier. We know that it is four years and then 70, with the fourth having been to the Lord. We understood how the count played out of when they came into the land, when they held elections when they planted the new year of trees the first time in 1949 and when they took office to let us know when the 70 years began and if indeed it still is true that it is from nissan and not from tishri this is our last hope i would even put it in here Do you know why I would maybe even consider it here, even though not really? Because it's the 16th day. (laughs) Only the 16th. And the only reason I say that is because 70, right? 70, the I-N, is the 16th Hebrew letter. Interesting, right? 14 for one eye, 16 for the other eye, and beginning is right here. Oh my goodness, I just caught that. The 14th Hebrew letter, which is noon, and it's the 14th day on the Gregorian. Maybe it means nothing, but it's right in the wheelhouse. The 16th letter, which is the other I, which means I-N. It's the 16th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And in the middle is I-N. In the middle is, sorry, is Aleph. This is 14. This is one that means beginning, and this is 16. Isn't that cool? I just caught that. And this is the date that the red star or the red horse, I should say, gives the report to the Lord. And the comments there as the beginning. Wow. Well, let me go to the apocrypha book that will help give you the understanding of how and why this could literally be Tuba Shavat. Because remember, Tuba Shavat is what? It's a festival. It is one of the Lord's festivals, right? But what do we know about the Jews, brothers and sisters? What do we know about the Gentiles, the church? The church erred. What do we know about the Jews? The Jews have erred in their festivals and feasts. They erred, both of them, not knowing the scriptures. You're going to see that in their error, They failed, missing something. Let's go have a look. The Book of Jubilees, my brothers and sisters. The Book of Jubilees. And when I opened the Book of Jubilees from my documents, lo and behold, it opened to this page. This 
was what dawned on me, dropped into my spirit when I was sitting in the garage last night. Listen to this. Let me find out what chapter we're in. So if you guys wanted to go look it up. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Come on already. Chapter 6. Chapter 6, starting in verse 32 of the Apocrypha book of Jubilees. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of years and will forget the new moon and the Sabbaths and the festivals and in all the order of the years they will err. Have we been following the years to find the path of the years? Darn right we have. For I know, and from now on, I will make it known to thee, and not from my heart, but thus is written in a book before me, and is ordained in tablets of heaven, the division of the days, that they forget not the festivals, see, not the feasts, the festivals of my covenant and walk according to the festivals of the Gentiles. See, so that they don't forget his covenant festivals and start walking after the festivals of the Gentiles. What would be some festivals of the Gentiles? Halloween? Uh, uh, why do I keep saying Halloween? Uh, Valentine's Day? Don't forget, it's gonna be this early in the morning on the 15th, which on our side of the world, I'm Mountain Standard Time in Calgary, it'll be the 14th. People are going to be out. They're going to be celebrating Valentine's Day on these pagan festivals that the Lord said are the Gentiles festivals. And it just so happens. He's trying to say, hey, you're going to have things land on Gentile festivals. Don't be deceived. Don't be, don't, you're going to be so gone off in an air. You're not going to realize that my times are in it. Because you have erred. Well, what did they err on? The years the seasons and times. Let's keep reading. And walk according to the festivals, so that you don't walk, right? According to the festivals of the Gentiles after their errors. So who erred? The Jews. Who else has erred? The Gentiles. Who did we show in Mark and in Matthew who have erred? The world, the church. The Gentiles and Judah both have erred. Mark and Matthew have erred. But who are those diligently seeking the path of the years and the understanding and the order of the new moons and the Sabbaths and the festivals of the Lord? Those who are diligently seeking, right? So let's read this again. And walk after and walk according to the festivals of the Gentiles after their errors and after their ignorance. Now listen to this. And there will be those who will make observations. Hello. There will, though, be some who will make observations of what? Of the moon. For this one, the moon, corrupts the stated times and comes out early each year by 10 days. Let me read that again. And there will be those who will make observations. Hello. Of the moon. Hello. For this one, the moon corrupts the stated times and comes out early each year by 10 days. And in this way, they will corrupt the years and will observe a wrong day as the day of testimony. Or... Uh, and a corrupted festival day. And everyone will mix holy days with unclean ones and unclean with holy. Hello. For they will err. Jew and Gentile, church, Mark, Judah, Matthew, as to months and Sabbaths 
in festivals and jubilees. And on this account, I command thee and testify to thee that thou shouldest testify to them. For after thy death, thy children will corrupt so that they make a year only 364 days. And on this account, they will err as to the new moons, the Sabbaths, and the fixed times and festivals, and will eat blood with all kinds of flesh. What was the key? That the moon would be off 10 days and corrupt all of their times and their festivals. How many days is this? 10 days. What is Tuba Shabbat? A festival. People say, oh, it's not in scripture. It's not, it's not really a biblical feast or a festival. Yes, it is. It's right here. We know it like the back of our hands. It's right here. It's when you come into the land and plant all manner of trees for food. See, this is all trees for food. These are fruit bearing trees. Do you remember Polycarp's name means much fruit? Hello. Smyrna workers working during seals and the head of Smyrna back in the day was represented as much fruit. And in the modern age, what's going to happen? They're going to be the ones bringing in what? Much fruit, the great multitude. They're going to be working with the apostles. Of course it is a festival to the Lord. It's right there. And Jubilees told us that it would be 10 days where the moon would be coming out too soon. So what would be 10 days later? The 24th day of Shabbat, which is the 11th month. Wait, which is what? Which is the 11th month? The 24th day of the 11th month? When that, when that red horse, when that red horse on the 24th day of the 11th month in the 70th year tells the Lord we've gone to and fro and everything's at peace and still. So on their Hebrew calendar, this is what it is. But the Lord said they would be off by 10 days. Hello. And we got the chiefs tomorrow. And then three days later. And the apostolic age that begins a period that starts with one week. In which we'd be looking at the escape of the pre-trib bride of Christ. About 10% or 2.8% of the population of the world. Which would be 10% of the church that will be part of the rapture at the end. Most will be alive even though many, 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 probably a few hundred million even. Or a couple hundred million might even be dead. That means that about 1.2 something billion people will be part of the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. 1.8% vanish. Israel is attacked in the north. The seven day wedding in heaven begins. The stones throw coming somewhere about the following weekend. Men's hearts looking up, right? Men's hearts looking up for fear. Let's go to that in Luke 21. This is really interesting to add this in here right now. Because this is something we've shared just a while back. You see, in reading it at times, it seemed as if this was, you know, the escape group that's going to go, right? Lift up your heads, your redemption draws nigh. But. I believe this is the escape, right? Those who are accounted worthy. The accounted worthy will be those who what? Who will escape all. Listen to this. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We showed that this accounted worthy group from those that we shared, just like we showed in, remember in the Mark Matthew, they do err not knowing the scriptures. Luke's group has no condemnation. 
what is it but they which shall be accounted worthy this is the pre-trib group but it, then there's another group the comma n gives us a separation those who are the resurrection of the dead who are those who will be of the resurrection of the dead it's not those who are dead in christ right now they're already in the third heaven there is nobody waiting in their graves to go to the third heaven they're already with them this was a question that was recently asked i don't know that i'm going to have time for another video on it this resurrection of the dead has nothing to do with those who have already died in christ pre-trib those who have already died in christ over the last two thousand years they're already in the third heaven waiting for us and you could prove this well, I, I can't do the whole teaching on it now, but we have proven this in videos. You see, what we do know is this is the group, which is the Smyrna group, who will put their necks on the line, who will be resurrected to rule and reign with Christ as priests for a thousand years, and the second death will not hurt them. You see, that's Smyrna. There, You know that there's no pre-trib resurrection from the dead because even at the rapture of the great multitude they're not being resurrected from the dead whoever dies during seals as part of the rapture group having accepted christ and committed to him during seals when they die we see them given white robes those who survive will be the ones with the palms in their hands they're both there before the lord where in paradise but when christ was crucified there were the two on each side of him and the one on his right which would be like our left that was the one he said what he accepted christ he realized who christ was and christ said tonight you will be with today you will be with me in paradise hello he was with them in paradise there's no waiting for those that are in christ pre-trib they're in the third heaven and for those that weren't spirit filled in christ but were in a belief and and repented were with the lord they would be in paradise not everybody gets to go to the same place they're already in paradise and the others in christ are already in the third heaven the resurrection of the dead here is talking about the luke group of disciple workers the first group of pre-trib group goes as the accounted worthy the workers of seals the smyrna group are those who will be part of the resurrection of the dead with those who were promised god's people who were promised the kingdom of god on in on the earth right the kingdom of heaven not the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven which is theirs on earth they're promised that's the resurrection of which this group of seals workers will be resurrected to be a part of so if the accounted worthy are escaping all these things that shall come to pass then who would be outside of the world who's here watching this who would be a part of this group here who is seeing these things coming and that their redemption draws nigh which redemption would this be i believe this redemption now is the redemption of the this of the remnant worker bride remember when he comes when they realize who he is and they're in his presence they will no longer have faith they're, they're redeemed their faith is no more as first peter one said as we've taught many times so it may very well be remember we're talking about the stone's throw during that first week which is directly related to ephesus and we see here in luke 21 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars you see and in the stars like a single star like a single star like a meteor something coming to the earth right and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory who's going to see him I believe the disciples the whole world's not going to see them i believe this is for the disciple workers that we will know because who on earth is ready and watching for the lord coming who is ready for him to come for 40 days 
Hello. Hello. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. If there are two groups, as we have proven there is, and one is the accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and this is a part of all these things that shall come to pass, then it seems pretty straightforward to say that they're not going to be witnessing this either. The Son of Man is coming in a cloud. When he comes in a cloud, what is he doing? He's staying for 40 days. When he comes in the cloud for the rapture group, what happens? He's he's going to be on Mount Zion and he's going to be here now as, as king and high priest Melchizedek on Mount Zion with the 144,000 and then going out. When he comes at the end of Matthew coming in the clouds, he's coming what? Feet down. So I no longer believe that this is the escape this is his him coming at the eighth day because this stone throw is going to be seen <laughs> in the midst of those first seven of the eighth day and then at the end of the wedding we're going to see him coming who is going to see him coming the worker bride group that remains when is that happening in the midst of this revival week beginning what a great way to kick off a revival, right? Tens of millions of people vanish. And they just so happen to talk about it in a movie released in January, right? The Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist. They've even got it in many theaters. We've got a, an ad coming out to coming to the truth of Christ and the word and not the error of the Jews, not in the error of the church. What better way to suddenly have tens of millions of people vanish? The wedding is taking place in heaven. A stone's throw is coming. People's hearts failing them for fear of what's coming upon the earth because everything's now getting crazy. Israel was attacked. Their church saying, oh my goodness, Israel's attacked. This must be the end. People have vanished. We missed the pre-trib rapture. We missed the rapture. The stone's throw coming. But who's ready for that redemption? Who isn't afraid? Who's about to see him coming in a cloud? His remnant bride, who was prepared, who was told to gird themselves and when, as when their Lord, when he returns from the wedding, be girded and ready. And when he comes, he will feed them and dine with them. And he will open their understanding. So that as John 1 says, 1 John 1 says, nobody will need to teach them because they will know all things. That's this group, brothers and sisters. Let's see where this leads us from the eighth day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? This is the beginning. Seven days. This is the eighth day. He starts his 40. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 40. Where does the Son of Man's 40 days end? Right here. But wait a second. I thought when the 40 days of the Son of Man ends, isn't that then when they would begin, right? The, the raven would go out and begin at the year's end? Well, isn't that interesting? Let's go show that piece of scripture. We've shown it from many places. But let's go to Genesis chapter 8. We know the yet seven days and after seven days in Genesis chapter 7. Then you got the 40 days and here's at the end of 40 days. At the end of 40 days, who goes out right away? The raven. Who's the raven? It's represented as Syria, right? The Arab, Assad. The raven. When? As soon as the 40 days are over. When the 40 days are over, what is it? The year's end and the beginning of the year. At the year's end, beginning of the year, 
the raven is sent out okay at the year's end the raven is sent out what did we see in second chronicles 24 at the end of the year syria came up with a host against them do they attack on day one no they compass about luke 21 told us that while christ is warning for the 40 days among so many other things he's doing one of the things he's doing is also warning jerusalem that they're about to be compassed about remember when he comes in a cloud and he's here as the son of man we come to the end of luke 19 and he weeps over jerusalem saying if thou had even known at least in this thy day the things which belong to thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee encompass thee around and keep thee in on every side and they shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave uh in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation what is luke 21 saying he's warning them of this compassing about that's about to take place he's warning them they're about to be surrounded by syria and those that are with syria but then he leaves but then he leaves and when he leaves what do we know he leaves and syria comes the raven spirit has been released when the year's end comes well wait a second how is this tenth the year's end hello on their calendar it'll be the tenth on their calendar this is nisan just like on their calendar this is the 24th of shabbat the 11th month but if everything is off by 10 days yet still happening on their calendar time it's making sense what would 10 days off be hello so what would this be the year's end the actual year's end what happens at the year's end it's when he comes what happens when he comes we know that what there were seven days for the wedding on the eighth day he begins his 40 days the 40 days he's he's warning he's with the disciples they're going about doing things he leaves on the 40 days as acts chapter one and what do you get one two three days they compass about for three days and what happens do you know what happens before they're attacked we've got the typology of the dove going out what happens when the dove goes out when the dove goes out on the early part of the 50th day the dove goes out and is anointing as acts chapter 2 what we call 2.0 the dove is going to anoint the disciples who had not yet received the holy ghost anointing of what we call acts 2.0 they're going to have power and abilities they're going to have understanding as has never yet been seen even in history but they will still be submissive and under of course the apostles they're going to be sent throughout the earth and when that happens and the 50th day and the dove has now come and given them the anointing they will now go out from Jerusalem remember that let's go to Luke go to Luke chapter 24 he tells them and it's only in Luke by the way you don't get this in Mark and Matthew they're not starting from Jerusalem he tells them in Luke 24 47 and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem so it will begin from Jerusalem and they will be sent out throughout the world from there and what happens Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed on the 50th day which on their calendar they will believe it to be passover because in the movement of things 
it is passover but in their being wrong with the moon according to the lord with what jubilees told us they will be off by 10 days and it'll look like what the third fourth of the month they compass about at the year's end and then destruction comes at the end of three days which is the end of the 50 days and that day is directly lined up to pass over the 14th day of the first month according to their calendar and what were the original 14thers they were all about true nisan or the 14th day from abib at nisan and we are 14ers unknowingly we found out there was 14thers in history and that they were smyrna and it would just so happen that the 14 years of tribulation would begin on the hebrew calendar of the 14th day of nisan do you know what it says as we go back into genesis chapter 8 what happens when the dove comes and the dove anoints them we see the typology right no rest for the sole of her foot right so she's pulled back into the ark and what happens you guys know this this was a beautiful catch by our sister jamie a couple of three years ago and he stayed yet seven other days that's like the seven years of seals then the dove goes out again and we taught how the olive leaf right is plucked off olive leaf is also like a branch well what is the church the gentiles grafted in right is plucked off what is plucked a representation of the harpazo rapture it means plucked and then what happens stayed yet seven other days as years this would be the end of the 14 years and at the end of the 14 years the dove never returns to heaven right never returns to the ark and not the end of 13 and then lord fulfilling the 14th this is at the end of the 14th and at the end of the 14th what do we know it is it'll be the end of the 6000 it'll be the 6000th year fulfilled right and what is it and it came to pass the 600th year as the 600th 6000th and it'll be the first year first month first day of the month hello so if there's 14 days and they were 14thers as 14 days and we're 14ers as 14 years and we revealed these seven days as typologies of seven years being 14 years what happens when the dove leaves at the end of that 50th day after anointing those disciples well look at this and he stayed yet seven other days and he stayed yet seven other days this one is the hebrew word 2342 this one is the hebrew word 3176 well how is that possible why isn't it the same word this one means exactly what you would think wait stayed wait be patient but that's not what the beginning one is do you know why because this is the beginning of the 14 years when the dove leaves and that anointing has happened and the disciples go out with the apostles from jerusalem jerusalem is attacked and the tribulation of the 14 years begins and what does it say bam pain sorrow wounded pain travail tremble it's the beginning of the 14 years what is it lined up to the 14th day of nisan but really this was the year's end you see this was the time of the year's end and there were three days of compassing about and then the final attack which means the lord was here see the lord was here on this day remember i told you to remember something as i bring this to an end remember i told you to remember something there in luke 21 is it possible that this is also going to be connected to it well how about we have a look remember when jerusalem would be compassed about when there's when you see that you're about to be compassed about everybody flee and get out and go to the mountains and let not them which are in the countries enter there into 
meaning don't let those who are in other countries you guys have people come into jerusalem they're coming to live they're moving into jerusalem don't let those who are in other countries come in when does this happen it is represented by yom aliyah you do not see this in luke's discourse in uh, mark in matthew's discourse what is yom aliyah how about that the day before jesus leaves and he's also warning to not let them which be in other countries come in and what is yom aliyah yom Haliyah or aliyah day is an israeli national holiday celebrated annually on the 10th of the hebrew month of nisan to commemorate the jewish people entering the land of israel written in the in the hebrew holy bible the holiday is established to acknowledge aliyah immigration to the jewish state as a core value of the state of israel and honor the ongoing traditions of olam in the israeli society what is it the immigration to jerusalem guys it's in luke discourse luke's discourse during a period of time of the 40 days of the son of man when he's also telling them to not come and aliyah from the other countries brothers and sisters i don't know about you but i could tell you this i could not be more excited i hope and pray with all of my heart that we have finally understood you know it is not a thus saith the lord but if you have been following this ministry for any amount of time you are very well aware of all of these connections that we have made over the years that we have taught on and shared the amount of dedication in the revelation to tuba shavat over the past several months and even couple of years the dedication to finding the truth of the 70th year of israel with the 70 to the lord as the new year of trees to the 70th of israel as nisan and when it's all done at the end of 14 years the 70th of judah we've shared this pendant in an unbelievable revelation from the spirit that revealed to us aldebaran the bullseye star 1450 which revealed to us taurus and we have been tracking it for over two and a half years since to get the understanding and on this date 10 years 10 days after tuba shavat which would actually be the lord's tuba shavat because the world and judah has erred by 10 days is the date we have in scripture when the red horse rider and those with him had been going out throughout the earth for who knows how long reports to the lord and on this date begins the 50 days as the 70 to the lord tuba shavat as beginning the 50 days as a direct representation of the pendant of the lord of which we were given the revelation all the way back that started in second corinthians chapter 12 verse 2 i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago it's like a rapture and they go to the third heaven this above we'd been discerning for a long time and for a few years now about three four years three and a half or so years we have now understood and have understood that this above was about the 50 days and when it was understood how it was to play out in the 50 days and we showed it with the revelation from numbers chapter 13 with noon and osi whose name is hosea 
having had his name changed to Yeshua, and his father's name was Noon, and this was Jesus, and we realized what that revelation was, and that Noon represented the number 50 in the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. When that was realized on March 10th of 2020, I was going to take the video down. I was going to take the video down because I had realized what I had said. And the Lord gave us that one revelation, that one word after all of these years. The Spirit told us not to take it down because I was right on target. Brothers and sisters, right on target is the bullseye of Taurus. Is the bullseye of Taurus. And at the bullseye of Taurus, my dear brothers and sisters, the comment will be added on the date that Scripture gives us in the 70 years of Israel. Brothers and sisters, I'm not sure how much more we could bring to clarity in the revelation of this understanding. All of these things that we had already taught, all of these connections that we were thinking or that I was thinking at this point were to be set aside to some to some capacity because Tuba Shavat was gone, we are still in the game. We are still in the game. Our Taurus sign is at hand. The prophetic word is at hand. The shout out to America and the world about the state of the church and the true Christ is at hand. The apostolic age beginning is at hand. The stone throw that comes in the midst of it is at hand. Those who will witness it knowingly seeing the Lord coming in a cloud is at hand. And all of it is still in the 70th year of Israel, the true 70th year. Brothers and sisters, I love you with all of my heart. I pray for you and your families every day, every single night on my knees. Some of you, I know your names. The vast majority, I obviously don't. But you are still in our prayers. We appreciate your prayers over all these years and continued prayers. We appreciate your intercessions like Jodel that gave us that revelation and had to take on that attack to give it in relation to being right on target. To others who have interceded in other ways. To those who continue to support the ministry. We still got to go right to the end, right? To those that continue to support the ministry and not only in supporting us here with the ministry here, but in supporting our brother over in Uganda, who we have supported beautifully here in the last uh, two months. Um, so they could buy Bibles and they bought a printer now and can print their own printouts and they're doing it with youth. And he's traveling all over the place around Uganda and neighboring areas um, with our brother Steve over there. It's all for the Lord's purpose and will. It is all to extend his reach and his ministry. It is all to bring about the revelation of his truth in salvation and the season and time to all we can reach to. So thank you for your continued support over these years. And let's keep it going until the end comes. And if we have understood and this is the end, then guess what? Doesn't matter anyways, does it? But we will all be prepared. We will all be ready. And prayerfully, we will all 
be receiving crowns, brothers and sisters. Man, I'm so excited. It's our lifetime, brothers and sisters. It is our lifetime. Israel came back into the land. And we are here. True 70 years later. I love you. I'm excited to meeting you. Prayerfully, we'll be standing in the presence of the Lord, either in the third heaven or at his feet at the second meal. Greeting each other, high-fiving, hugging, loving on the Lord in his presence in absolute awe and wonder. God bless you guys. God bless your families. We'll talk to you soon or see you sooner. Bye for now.